in you know 2006 or 2007 uh i i i, I thought it'd be great to bring it up for this day because it, it happened this battle happened on veterans day oh for sure yeah so veterans we, hill you're vet, veterans hill yeah. Yeah. which for those who were there and it pops up on linkedin it pops up everywhere around this time of year like the folks that were there on veterans hill this you know otherwise pretty much unheard of battle goes down and it's been used as a you know a leadership tool for for army officers to figure out like what would you do here so it has been used as a situation to try to teach people certain things and i'll set it up by, by saying this is a, a a green on blue incident but not in the the afghan sense where you know some insider guy takes some shots at you know guys on base and kills them it wasn't like that right um we were going to do a, a direct action mission against a, a target like we always do right this we had a, a high value target that was located at a, a house and we were going to go to that house at night and, and and snatch them up right so we offset infill you know whatever it's three five kilometers and we start walking to down the road there's actually a big highway which is you know not something we're used to i was with the 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 helo assault force at a balad so we were in a lot of rural areas when we used to being around major highways yeah yeah we get a call from the ISR that, hey, there's a, a, a conventional convoy about two kilometers up. It's coming south. We want to avoid this convoy because this is how you can get, you know, mistaken for the wrong individuals. Right, right. And we see a, a nice hilltop out there in, in Iraq. You know, in the middle of the desert, there's this nice OP looking type position. So we decide we're going to walk around and kind of hunker down behind that terrain feature let the convoy pass and then get back on our way. Okay. The ISR picks us all out and we have the best intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance forces in the world. Right. Right. When you're, you're talking about supporting the Rangers as well and the task force, like even better, like we have yeah. the best. The, yeah. Whatever's that, whatever the best is out there, you're getting it for sure. And somehow they missed this Iraqi company a base that was there. So we're starting to come around, scoot, get closer and closer to this, this, um, this hilltop. It's on the, like, we'll say from where I'm walking on the right side of the road, when all of a sudden hell starts coming down at us, automatic weapons, RPGs, and we're just a ranger platoon on flat ground. Oh like, man. There's nowhere to hide. And, oh, where are we, what are we going to do? Where are we going to go? And we're all laying flat. You know, they got the Rangers up front, start returning fire like they do. They brought up a, the Carl Gustav, which for those listening or, or watching that don't know, it's a shoulder fire weapon that could be anti, you know, personnel or anti, you know, armor, you know, that type of thing. Similar to like a recoilless rifle or something. Yeah. And we're, we're doing whatever we can and trying to figure out what is going on. Like what is happening here? And while this is going on, I'm there with Chad Jenkins, who's the platoon leader. And then uh, the platoon sergeant at the time was uh, a guy named Mike Burke. And uh, we're yelling at each other, trying to figure this out. And while this is happening, I hear from the other side of the road, this loud report, you know, like of a, like an artillery or something firing. And then I see this giant round come over the road and impact around us. And I'm like, what the f was that? <laughs> <laughs> I get on the radio and the ISR is like, hey, there's like a tank company over there. Oh, my God. And they're starting to move. And that those rounds are coming from the main guns of those tanks. Jesus. And that's when I like yelled out to, you know, the leadership that I'm around because it's the JTAC. I'm, I'm there with the CP, you know, like the leadership team. And I'm like, they got tanks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I know how to say um, they got tanks and they're they're starting to uncoil and to you know maneuver onto us while we're in this. Now at this point, were were they? Did you think they were in like enemy tanks? Like were they enemy tanks or like I, I didn't mean to cut you off, but it just no. This is two thousand six or I think I think two thousand six or two thousand seven. So we're well beyond the you know invasion. Yeah, so there's exactly right. These are now our our friends. Oh, right. That's why I say it's green on blue. And, yeah, yeah, but. You know, to be fair to them, they're up there on the, this hilltop and they see a bunch of folks sneaking up on them at night. You know, they don't 
they didn't know we were coming. Yeah. And they reacted how they thought they had to do. So I, I don't sure. really blame them for that reaction. You know, they're they're on edge too, right? They're of getting course. attacked by yeah. Al Qaeda and at the time as well. Yep. So now we're in the situation where we're getting shot at by tanks. We got full on fire coming down from on top of a, a elevated position and we're flat laying in the desert. Jeez. And yeah, you know, I'm I'm worried. I'm a lot of you, I'm scared. Like, what are we gonna do? So I, I start yelling at Chad Jenkins, like, let me drop a bomb. Just let me drop a bomb. Uh, because I think, you know, at this point, I'm thinking, let's save our Rangers. Like, and it might sound bad to people who are out there listening or who don't understand warfare, but I'll, I'll, at the time, I would trade in any of the Iraqis on that OP for any of the Americans down on the desert floor. Right. And at that point, you didn't know, did you know they were friendly up, up on the top? Or, I mean, you didn't know. I did. That, once we, once I figured out that there was tanks in like a, a little patrol base, like it was a base over there. Oh, okay. Like we had no idea it was there. It was that was just so weird about the whole thing. It's like our ISR is the best, and somehow this slipped. We didn't. We walked right into it. Yeah. And so I knew they're. I knew they're friendly, but like I said, we're in this situation that seems like we can't get out of it. And right. There's nowhere to run essentially, and I I'm, I don't I don't want anybody in our side, Americans to get to get killed in this. So for sure. But but, but Chad Jenkins had the wherewithal with all this stuff going on. We're talking over explosions. And bullets flying over our heads. Jeez. And, and he said, he yelled something to me to the effect of like, I'm not going to kill Americans. And it clicked on me. as that time when we had these Iraqi forces out there, we typically had a whole group of American advisors that would go out there with them. Right. You know, so, oh, there's more to this picture than just us, right? Like he was thinking about, is there Americans up there? Are we yeah. on a, a blue on blue? Is this a you know? Is this the case of fratricide about to happen? And so we're we're lost. And I'm like, let's let's do a show of force. So I bring in the F-16s. They come right across. I think if they think that there's aircraft on station, that it's got to be for these guys and not for us. We didn't request anything. Exactly right. Yeah. Well, they get too low, and their flares automatically pop out of the F-16 illuminating our position on the desert floor oh my god and the fire just gets more intense and concentrated so we're like no no more flares like stop, stop. <laughs> um the situation is just getting worse and now the tanks are really starting to come out and 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 you know trying to create like a flanking maneuver on us yeah so we finally decide you know we gotta run like we just gotta get out of here and we're, we're all the time i'm talking to the helicopters trying to get like an LZ set up somewhere that the Chinooks can come and pick us up. Yeah. We could run to, and then they identified a little berm. So we all start running and it's like full on, full run. Everybody's a dead sprint. Yeah. Uh, the whole range of platoon. And we get down there and this part, we can start seeing the tanks coming up on our left-hand side. Like they're there now we can see them and, and some Humvees and stuff. We're still getting shot at and we're waiting on and still trying to coordinate the extract, the exfil. We're like, how are we going to stop these tanks? Like, we need to stop these tanks before they come in. It'll be like shooting fish in a barrel. Yeah. And we don't know what to do. We had Apaches on from the Mississippi National Guard. And they went and shined some white lights on them. It wasn't stopping anything. Like, they weren't getting the hint that, like, these helicopters and F 16s weren't there for them. And were these American tanks? I don't, I'm not sure to this day. I don't know, but I, I'd imagine oh, okay. they weren't. They were they're they're Iraqi tanks. Okay, they, they weren't M1s. Okay. Um. So we're sitting there, and you know, to this day, we're we we all kind of hazy. I think we, how are we going to stop this? We ended up saying to the the Apaches, like, "Will you land on the road or in the desert in front of these tanks so we can run?" To our exfil point, and these guys in the Mission National Mississippi National Guard said, "Sure thing, man." And so, man, that could have went. Oh, how how brave are those guys? I mean, how the, helpful. <laughs> the Humvee. Frankly. So there's a Humvee out in the lead. I remember this because I I'm watching them as they're starting to land, and there's a Humvee out in the lead, and there's some tanks out there, and they start to land, and Iraqis start dismounting with their AKs. 
and they're running up to the helicopter and they look like frantic, like they're mad that the helicopter's there. Like and they're in our way. Every time they get close to the helicopter, the Apaches would lift up a little bit to create that rotor wash. Yeah. And it blow them back. <laughs> and <laughs> the Apaches blocked those vehicles and those tanks and allowed us to run. And the Chinooks came in real quick, picked us up, and we were out of there. Oh, my God. The amazing were, they, thing- um, were they creating any kind of brownout? Like, did that help at all? Or was it just uh, just the... Just- the rotor wash blowing the guys back. It was a little bit, a little bit of both. Like so, oh. they were at, at this point they got to the road, so you know it was more of the rotor wash blowing, physically blowing the the Iraqi soldiers back as they had their AKs out, like Jeez. kind of pointing them at these guys, you know, at the Apaches. And we got out of there. And the amazing Did you guys thing, take any casualties or anything or zero. Man, it is an amazing. Oh my god! And even. On the other side, we come to find out later that, you know, they're in a fortified position up there. But on the Iraqi side, you know, the Carl Gustav round, like, blew off a guy's hand uh, on the Iraqi yeah. side. But that was it. So it's not, that's side, not too bad. I mean, it sucks, but at least the guy is still alive, you know. That's right. So there was no casualties, really. And no casualties oh on our God. side. And it, it, it just became this, you know, and what the lessons learned are from that mission was, like, for me, was there's more to – a tactical operation than, than meets the eye, right? There's other things to consider. So that many other things. Leader yeah. on the battlefield, you need to have those considerations in there. Because if there was another leader on that battlefield besides Chad Jenkins who was really fearful or, you know, not thinking that way, he might have just been thinking, let's stop this at all costs. And I could have just, you know, brought down everything we had on this post. Yeah. And you think about the strategic ramifications of, you know, killing a bunch of Iraqi soldiers and, you know, taking out a bunch of Iraqi material when we're trying to build up this new army to take over their country, right? To take back control of their country. Yep. You think about killing American advisors on the ground and having to, you know, tell people back home and families back home, hey, your 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 son or your your husband or whoever was killed by American forces, like an F-16 dropped the bomb on. Right. You know, like and hell, maybe the the tanks weren't quite as aggressive as they wanted to be, and then you dropping a bomb on that the top of that hill would have made them even yeah the more, horse, may they, yeah exactly maybe they had more a qrf come out or who, who knows what it could have happened yeah and and so it became a lesson and, and i didn't know this until like last year that they i think like the captain's career course one of those army leadership courses they they have this vignette out there to talk about like what would you do in the situation like a seemingly impossible situation to get out of yeah you know how do you get out how do you get your folks safely out how do you respond like how do you return fire uh, we had to return fire. We did, but it's just an amazing mission that you know nobody really knows about except for the folks who were there. Yeah, um, you know, and I guess there were some things that came out afterwards about it that you know because battle space. So we do battle space owner coordination before we go out on these missions, and nobody knew that that element was out there. That's so crazy. A failure in, in in battle tracking. This is before you know the common operating operational picture was or Link sixteen. Other things that we have now that are supposed to help that kind of stuff right um yeah. well you know how those guys are i mean oh. they, they they're they're a little more loose than we are so they might just been like hey go set up an op up there or just move some tanks over here without telling anybody you know it could yeah. have been a an ambitious battalion commander or some iraqi battalion commander who knows man it was it was just, it was gnarly it was a gnarly mission <laughs> yeah man it's yeah. The, the amazing thing is nobody you didn't take any casualties i mean and you got out of there and you it was a very unconventional method of you know, just go block them with the, you know, with a helicopter and let's run so, away. It's a so, unique use of fire support assets. To <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> affect your expo. You know, uh, um, and you know, we we were we got as soon as we got home, almost we got, but we got on the phone like trying to figure out who these Apache guys were. Yeah. And can what can we do? To, can put them. We put them from champagne put them or medals and yeah, like on the phone with me. I'm like, thank you. Like you guys. <laughs> Saved our asses. Really did you good. ever link? Did you ever go face to face? Ever link up with them at all? Or we did because this this generated some you know obviously some interest. Sure. Amongst leadership in the task force, <laughs> so we had they they had to have like an AR, a bigger AR than normal on, on this one. Yeah. And we were able to link up and and and, and do that. I you nice. know, but at the time I didn't establish that relationship, so I to this day I don't remember their names. Yeah. Anything like that, but it was. We don't think about it. Yeah, you're not. Yeah. Who knows? Gnarly. It would have been. Yeah. But it happened on Veterans Day. 